In this video we will introduce regular expressions and study their relation with regular languages. A regular expression over an alphabet uses the binary operators addition and product, and the unary operator star. The product symbol is usually omitted and the star is denoted as a postfix operator, similarly to exponentiation. Basic expressions are either symbols from the alphabet or lambda. A regular expression represents a language or is interpreted as such in the following way. Each symbol from the alphabet is interpreted as the language that only contains this symbol. Lambda is interpreted as the language that only contains the empty word. Addition is interpreted as union, the product as concatenation, and the star as the star operation on languages. In this way, regular expressions are a mechanism to represent languages. In fact, by a of notation, we will identify the expression with its represented language. It is obvious that this regular expression represents a regular language, since regular languages are closed under union, concatenation and star, and there exists trivial automata recognizing a single symbol or the empty word. It is not as straightforward, and it can be even shocking, that any regular language can be represented with a regular expression. That is, for each automaton, there exists a regular expression that represents a language recognized by the automaton. In order to justify this property, we will see a process that converts an automaton to a regular expression. But before that, we need one previous element related to solving equations over languages. Suppose that we have this equation, where a and b are some specific languages, and x is a variable whose range is in the languages. We want to know the solutions of this equation, that is, the languages such that, when replacing x with one of them, this equality becomes true. Arden's lemma shows how to handle this kind of equation in three steps. In the first place, we see that the possible solution is a star b. Replacing x by a star b, in the right hand side of the equation we get this expression. On the one hand, a concatenated with a star b is a plus b. On the other, b coincides with lambda concatenated with b, since lambda is the neutral element of concatenation. Here we are taking out the common factor b. It may seem a bit tricky to take out the common factor, since we are not dealing with addition or product between naturals. But an exercise at the beginning of the course justifies that this distributive property also holds with union and concatenation of languages. Finally, this is a star, and thus we obtain the left-hand side of the equation after replacing x with a star b. In the second place, we see that, in fact, any other solution L contains a star b. Note that, since L satisfies the equation, L contains b. For the same reason, L contains AL, and thus AB. Similarly, since L contains AL and AB, then it contains AIB, which is A squared B. So we see that L contains A to the N B for any N. We conclude that L contains A star B. Finally, we justify that, in the case where A does not contain the empty word, it follows that A star B is the only solution to the equation. We proceed by contradiction. Suppose that there exists a solution L different from A star B. Since any solution of the equation contains A star B, in order to make L and A star B different, there must exist a word of L that is not in A star B. We chose W as the word with minimum length satisfying this condition. By definition, this is L, and since B is included in A star B, it follows that W is also included in this other set. But then W must be in A L. Therefore, W can be constructed as a concatenation of a word W1 in A and a word W2 in L. W2 cannot be in A star B, else W would also be in A star B because W1 is in A. Moreover, since the empty word is not in A, W1 is not the empty word, and thus W2 is a strict suffix of W, implying that its size is smaller. Summarizing, W2 is in L but not in A star B, and its size is smaller than W. This contradicts the election of W as a word with the smallest size satisfying that it is in L, but not in A star B, and this concludes the proof. Let's focus again in our initial problem. We will explain how to transform an automaton into a regular expression with an illustrative example. We want to obtain a regular expression for the language of binary words that represent a multiple of 3. It would be hard to try to directly write a regular expression for it. But we already know the, an automaton recognizing this language. Here it is. Let L0 be the language recognized starting the run from the state 0. Note that, actually, L0 is the language of the multiples of 3, because the initial state is 0. Similarly, let L1 and L2 be the languages recognized starting the run from 1 and 2, respectively. 
The recognized words from the state 0 are either the empty word, since the state 0 is accepting, or they start with the symbol 0 followed by a word that is accepted starting from the state 0. Or they start with the symbol 1 and are followed by a word that is accepted starting from the state 1. Similarly, the words recognized from state 1 cannot be the empty word, since this state is not accepting, so they either start with a 0 and are followed by a word that is accepted starting from state 2, or they start with a 1 and are followed by a word that is accepted starting from state 0. Analogously, we can deduce another equality for L2. This equality is guaranteed that L0, L1 and L2 are a solution to this system of equations. We will use the Arden's lemma to isolate the variables, see that the solution is actually unique, and also obtain in the way a regular expression representing the language recognized by the automaton. Applying the Arden's lemma, we can isolate x2 in the last equation in this way. Note that this one is acting as the language A, which does not contain the empty word, and 0x1 is acting as the language B. It could be argued that we are not properly applying the Arden's lemma, since 0x1 is not a specific language B because x1 is a variable. However, for any x1 this equality will be true. Therefore, it is also true that x2 is uniquely determined depending on x1 by this equality. We replace x2 by this expression in the second equation and we obtain this one. Again, Arden's lemma lets us isolate x1 in this way. Replacing x1 by this expression in the first equation gives this one which is equal to this one taking into account the distributivity of addition and product. We end by isolating x0 applying one more time the Arden's lemma. Finally, this is a regular expression representing the multiples of 3. Before finishing this video, we try to intuitively interpret this expression as some kind of simulator of the original automaton. Here we have the automaton again. This star generates a concatenation of 0 or more words that start from the state 0, which is the initial one, and return to state 0, which is accepting, without any intermediate step through state 0. To reach state 0 from the state 0 without any intermediate step through the state 0, we either start with a 0 and we are already there, or we start with a 1. In this second case, from the state 1, we will go and return a few times through the state 2, and finally we will read a 1. Note that this sequence represents a movement to the state 2 reading a 0. Stay away in the state 2 reading once, and finally return to the state 1 reading a 0. This is the one that then takes us again to the state 0.